So you're starting a new D&D campaign. Yes. Could you imagine if one of the most celebrated world builders of all time showed up to give you advice on how to make it as good as it could possibly be? Well, you can stop imagining because in this video, Ed Greenwood, original creator of the Forgotten Realms, is here to show us his list of top tips to help you build better characters. But that's not even everything. We also have a very special guest that's managed to make quite the name for himself in world building. That's right, Bob Worldbuilder is here today to give us one of his top tips on world building. If you want to see Bob's full list of character building tips, be sure to check out that video on his channel where he had Ed on as a very special guest who shared a tip that wasn't in this video. You can find that video here, and I'll also be sure to leave a link to that down in the description. So be sure to show Bob's channel some love because he is a very talented guy and this collaboration has been a lot of fun. Every character should have larger, longer-term goals that fit with their alignment, if known, and heritage. What do they want out of life? This is far too often overlooked or ignored in favor of the character's immediate goals. We all have dreams. And even if you don't share a goal with someone, it can be inspiring to hear their longing for it. Some folks look ahead in life and disruptors like player characters may be an ideal opportunity to take steps to what you want to achieve. Are those people sailors? Who knows? Why don't you ask them yourself? Every character should have personal characteristics that you can see and hear in play. Are they patient? If they'll wait for another day to further their goals, then if their goal is to get rich, but the armed and scary player characters are demanding all of the dragon's treasure, they'll give in. However, they might try to gain something, like giving in but telling the player characters, hey, you owe me one, next treasure is mine. Or are they cunning and devious, and maybe have experience with traps and swindles? Are they generous? Or are they literal? I want it, I want it now, and no sharing. In storytelling, in gaming, there are many world builders, not just me. Many of us create stuff. And now I'm gonna hand over to our special guest, the very talented Bob the World Builder. Take it away. Thank you, Ed. Very happy to be here. So now that your character has a couple defining characteristics that you can see and hear during gameplay, you can really capitalize on those characteristics by having them change over time. I'm sure you've heard terms like static and dynamic characters. One stays the same no matter what happens to them over the course of a story, and that has its merits. But the other changes or grows in some way based on what they've experienced. That's the underlying principle of the classical hero's journey. So when you're portraying a hero, you should consider how their adventures change them. For example, if your inexperienced hero was arrogant, always standing tall and dominating every conversation, well, excuse me, princess. Perhaps after enough adventuring, they've kept their confidence, but become more stoic and eager to listen and learn from others. Or maybe your arrogant character has become a little paranoid over time, knowing that danger could be around any corner. Superficially, an experienced adventurer might wear more stylish clothing purchased with all their loot. I am more than all of you. Or wear more practical clothing for battle. They might have gained or lost body mass, learned a new language, collected tattoos or scars, or of course, some magical items always displayed on their person. And as a game master, Adding new descriptive quirks to familiar NPCs can hint to your players that something has changed in their life, for better or for worse. Maybe the tavern keeper's business is booming since your powerful adventurers started coming around and they're living a little more lavishly. Maybe the general store owner has a limp after a recent run-in with a debt collector. Overall, the events of the game world should have a noticeable impact on the people living within it. And in order to call attention to these changes, a character needs to have that established baseline of characteristics. Back to you, Ed. Tell those stories. Bring those characters to life. Thanks, Bob. If you're enjoying this, please like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you'll know when the next video is releasing and you can have all this fun all over again. And if you'd like to have 
many Realms Lore videos and other Ed videos in your future, please consider going to Patreon, my Patreon, Ed Greenwood's Patreon, and becoming a Protector of the Realms. And there you will be served a buffet of new Realms Lore and behind-the-scenes stuff from all the other cool new projects I'm working on. See you there. Every character should have favorite tactics or fallbacks that they're comfortable with. Do they negotiate? Try to defuse tension? Run away? When I say tactics, it might not be anything fighting. It might just be, what does this old lady do when something goes wrong? Are they a, a weeper? If the hero and heroine kiss, are they gonna go, oh, that's beautiful? And, or are they gonna go, uh, get a room? You're just trying to put together a little few points so that you don't have to improvise in the way of having to think on the fly. You can improvise from a few point form things you put down about what will this character do. Does this character stand stubbornly or does this character run? Does this character fade away because they never want to be part of any troubles? Or do they want to be there in the thick of it and hear everything so they can go back to, you know, the tavern and tell all the, their friends, I was there and here's what happened. If you already know what all these people are going to do, you don't have to think about it and make it up on the fly. You can just follow the script and the improvise from the script. Ad-libbing, it's great fun if you have guidance. <laughs> Give every character a visual or audible tag the players can refer to and remember them by. For example, the character is wearing a red hat, hmm. so the players can nickname them Red Hat. Or they always cough or titter nervously or flex or dry wash their hands. Knowing these things helps a DM or GM run the character in any situation no matter what the players try at the table, and no matter what chaos ensues. Here's a little extra tip. Give the character a name that isn't silly. Unless, that is, their being a constant source of humor is their function in the campaign. Otherwise, Thulsa Doom sounds a lot better than Bill. Just saying. Thank you, Ed Greenwood, for your sage advice, and also thank you, Bob, for sharing some of your wisdom. Don't forget to check out Ed over on Bob's video because I think it really has a lot to add to this conversation about building the best possible characters. I am Ivan with Many Realms, and I hope that your next character is one for the history books. <laughs> is that funny? I don't know. Okay. <laughs>